welcome back to the channel everyone this is sam here from sg angling and this is essentially part two of the previous episode so welcome to episode four and uh, we're back on the same lake of course it is a different day uh, but very similar day i mean high of maybe 80 degrees uh, water temperatures are in the low to mid 70s right now it's pretty early in the morning right around seven o'clock so we're going to hit some weeds and uh, you know maybe throw a few bucktails and uh, we'll see how the fish are acting towards it so uh, it's supposed to pick up uh, with the wind. The wind's a little stronger today, so that's going to be a little bit of a challenge. But uh, otherwise, it's a pretty quiet day on the lake right now. Nobody out here, so let's get some lures in the water and see what we can get in the net. So I am effectively starting out in a very similar place as I did when I caught that real big one on the last episode. And uh, the reason I'm starting here is because there's a lot of boat traffic that goes uh, in and out of this area in the middle part of the day. Those are oftentimes the best spots to start at because once the boat traffic starts going over the really good spots it pushes the fish down and pushes them into other areas plus it turns up a lot of weeds and things like that too so we're going to start out here and then move to secondary areas after that Spot number two. Uh, this is where we caught our second fish last time. We're gonna start out a little deeper and kind of run towards the shore now. Uh, so spot number two, no success on the first spot. So I've switched lakes. <laughs> uh, it's something I've done a couple times. It's never really worked out for me super great. Um, this is a really small lake, very remote. Um, just trees pretty much all around the lake. musky barely 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 hooked Jeez, that was a heck of a nut job. There we go. Little guy. Little 30s. Nice little guy. All right, so this is like a 140 or so acre lake. And uh, one of the things I was doing is I just kind of went to the leeward side and just started casting. And then I looked at the map of the lake and I realized that this side was actually deeper. And you know, on you know sunny skies like this and um, when it's warm, I know that fish tend to be a little bit deeper. So I went to the area of the lake that has steeper sided uh, shorelines and found a weed bed with a really nice drop off on it that dropped right off in the 10 feet and that 32 and a half inch or 33 inch musky hit right by that weed edge you got tangled up in the net but a good reminder always to make sure you have the tools ready so you can get that fish unhooked in a timely manner he was able to swim off and uh, be caught for another person uh, more so than another person can catch them let's put it that way all right uh, let's see if we can get another one to make it a multi-fish day also if you're wondering what it was caught with none less than CatchingMuskie.com, single number eight, which is a fantastic little bait. Ooh, magic. Oh, 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 oh. oh, did you see that? Oh, he almost had it. 
Oh, we got to circle back around on him. He was almost ready to eat. <laughs> oh, I should have gone back down for another one. He was so hot. I'm going to be honest here. There's no reason this fish shouldn't have been caught. So I'm going to take this opportunity to show you guys what I did wrong here so that you know how to properly execute a figure eight. Now watch as I bring the lure in. My first move should be to the left so that my first turn is a wide one. You can see I start to do that, but then I give up and take the first turn too early. Now, as I bring the lure alongside the boat, you can see the fish is following super close. He wants it. So I go to make my turn at the top, and again, I start it too early. I should have continued farther to the right alongside the boat, allowing the fish more time to see the lure and turn with it so that he can strike the bait at 12 o'clock. Because I turn too early, the fish loses sight of the lure for just a split second, in which case I should have gone down and away for another figure eight. Instead, I let the lure hang out to the left and the muskie half-heartedly lunges at the lure. Now look at my rod position. It's at 10 o'clock, not 12. Then I go to set the hook, but the fish had plenty of time to shake the hook and that spooked him to the point of no return. So the first turn should be wide, the second turn at the top should start much farther to the right so that you can set that fish up to strike at 12 o'clock, giving you more balance and leverage in pinning that muskie. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you want to see the biggest blunder anybody's ever made? This is a beauty. I never took the uh, the transom saver off of my motor. Look what it did to the prop. That's unbelievable. Holy smokes. So always make sure you take the transom saver. I didn't lose it, thankfully, because... Well, now I lost the strap, I think. <laughs> I go... At least I didn't lose the transom saver. I, I lost the, um, the bungee cord, although it was kind of broken anyway. Oh my goodness. That is unbelievable. It's still in decent shape. That's, that's the biggest blunder I've ever made. I thought I heard it hit, hitting something. I'm like, what is that noise? Wow. What a doofus I am. On a more serious note, fishing has completely turned off. I haven't even seen one in the last two hours. Uh, breeze has died down. It's actually turned into a really nice looking fishing day. So, heading a new shoreline here. Um, I don't know what we got below us here. We got some weeds. Let's see if we can get fish number two in the boat. Might have been a pike that was swiping at my lure there. Decent sized fish, in the 20s maybe, 30. All right, we're getting to our last leg here. I don't know what happened. Um, the fish turned off. It's as simple as that. Uh, we very aggressive feeding window and that was it. It didn't last very long. Sometimes that happens on really tough fishing days. Then the wind switched and things got, uh, got very difficult. So, um, you know, I think the, the lesson that can be learned is things aren't working on one lake, switch to the other lake, and maybe you'll get a, a feeding window on that lake, which is what happened, and we were able to put one fish in a boat. And um, we were able to uh, get a couple other follows. So, not a bad day. I always like to put two in the boat for an episode, but it didn't work out today. Hope you enjoyed it anyway. 
Thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you can, please do make sure to scroll down, hit that subscribe button. Also follow me on Instagram, SG underscore angling, and Facebook, SG angling as well. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time. I am Sam Gaza, and the episode that you're about to watch is a three and a half mile trek through dense woods, jagged rocks, and steep hills, all in search of unpressured river muskies. Risks of encountering wildlife, slipping off a rock into the raging rapids, or even breaking an ankle, all without a single bar of cell phone service, is precisely the reason why I seldom fish this area. Welcome to episode five.